What is going on, fellas? In today's book review, we got Astrology for the Soul, and this goes over everything that has to do with your North Node. And I find it to be more accurate, or if not the same, as your regular sun sign. So uh, let's get straight into the notes. Oh, I forgot to say who it was by Jane, Jan, Jane Spiller. I almost forgot who went first. All right, so. Uh, Find slash learn more about aspects in the nodes. Learn how to use time more effectively when learning your book chart. Once using the information to find more balance with the north node, check your energy levels and see if they're through the roof, happy, free, and trust yourself. Example in the introduction is my north node. If a person has a north node in Cancer or the fourth house, and in the book they use mine, which I thought was pretty cool, or just so happened to be or the fourth house, the issue of releasing control, trusting and openly sharing your feelings is huge. It's like chipping away at a block of granite. Your north node doesn't have to be in cancer for you to realize you need to work on sharing your feelings and be vulnerable and suggest practical approaches to creating balance and ease. The difference being is that it won't be as difficult to apply suggestions in these alternate areas. It will be in the area of your own nodal placement so even if you were to read this book without having to do anything inside or what do you call it, anything with astrology you can apply it to the areas where you need to work on obviously because you're not that good at it and you can see the areas where you really need help and that you should be better at and this one it kind of explains to you exactly and you should really notice it because your own north node sign you should probably have the struggles that it says and those should be the hardest to get better at. And all the other ones, they might not be as hard or some might be stronger than the others. Uh, you'll see your North Node like takes up like 75% and then the other ones are like 5%, 5% where you're not as good. And then maybe there's one where it's like 1% where it's like, it's so easy for you to flip on and off. So um, very well written, all this stuff. When you fully understand a person's inner mechanics and where these glitches are, how could you be so angry with them? So as soon as you're able to start seeing if, I mean, it's kind of hard to see people's signs and then you can't just know the North Node and stuff, but like if you're able to understand, or you ask them questions about it and they give you their answers and you're able to see, you can see how everyone's kind of predestined to have these certain traits. So like if someone most struggles with one thing and that's the one thing that irritates you, you can be more empathetic towards them because you know, like that's the hardest part they need to work on. The best work we can do for ourselves is work on ourselves. So a lot of times we might, you know, try to look at things outside of our control when in reality, we have one part of us where we're just straight repressing and ignoring. So if you just work on the things that you can yourself and stop worrying about the other people or getting other people's business, you'll become way better in every aspect of life. Examining the position of your North Node, you are looking at the basic life lesson underlying this entire lifetime. So you gotta, you gotta understand why you're here and the lessons that you shall learn. What the nodes are, the nodes are the moon are not planetary bodies. They are points formed by the moon's orbit around the earth intersecting with earth's path around the sun. The direction of the nodes is counterclockwise. The north node is ascending nord, node, the point that closes to the north pole and the south node is the descending node, the point closest to the south pole. They are always 180 degrees apart. The south node position in the chart located at the point exactly opposite of the north node depicts an aspect in our character that has been overemphasized in path li past lives and thus tends to take over our personality. So imagine like this, imagine your past 10 lifetimes, all you did was play hockey and that was it. You're gonna, come, that's why like some things, you know, you're natural at it, you're a natural athlete and so you're a natural singer it's because you had it in a past life and it comes easy to you. But that being said, maybe in this life you weren't, you came in strong with those categories and now you need to like adopt not using those. So some people might be here to be more selfish. Others might be here to be less selfish and give to others. So it all depends on why you're here. So that's why one thing doesn't work for all people because we're all made to be different. In this lifetime, it throws us off balance. When we are acting without awareness, we tend to act out the south node position. This book talks about the moon nodes, not planets. The moon rules our emotional bodies. Finding balance of the moon nodes creates balance in the emotional bodies. The sign in which the north node falls denotes the psychological shift that needs to occur within the personality. The house containing the north node shows an expression that allows the person to access the new psychological awareness. If your north node is the same sign as the house containing as the house, it is simply means double the intensity of the same life lesson. 
If your sign lands in the opposite house, you will have to continuously check with yourself to find the right blend of behavior. So it's very cool. Every All the astrology, it adds up completely. So let's say, for example, there's 12 zodiac signs. Let's say you have the one that's like, I want to say number one and then number six. They're going to be the opposites completely. And then if you have, um, and then let's say, for example, they have like the elements. So there's like, I want to say the four elements and it goes in order. So it might start with like one, two, three, four. And then when you get to five, it resets to the to, an, to the same element that was in number one. So it's all in chronological order, just like time. As you progress, you'll find life a lot less threatening and the things you desire manifesting more easily and naturally. Just as you spend so much time and energy developing one aspect of your character in your past lives, there was another part of you, the polar opposite, that was completely neglected. Thus, when you came into this carnation, you were out of balance. And that's why you need to restore those parts. Uh, life wants you to be happy, but as long as the imbalance exists, every happiness is going to be followed by an unhappiness. Tendencies for the past soul. In past lives, you had behaviors that served you well. Every life you kept building off these qualities, enabling you to thrive in past lives. However, in this carnation, these same patterns do not work. That is, they don't produce success, confidence, and ease. These are all qualities and and of themselves are not negative, but they describe part of your character that was overdeveloped in past lives. Lifetime after lifetime, you kept strengthening this one part of yourself from every possible direction until it grew out of proportion and unbalanced. So in this carnation, it is set up for your astrology chart for these old patterns to not work. Achilles heel trap. The trap you and your members of the group most easily fall into the temptation that is so attractive that it's easily falling into or fall into. It's a part of you that is magnified in this carnation, an appetite so exaggerated that it's like a bottomless pit that can never be satisfied. Just saying you know, some people it's like they're gonna never be satisfied with eating one piece of food. They can never be satisfied with receiving this amount of attention, this amount of money, this amount of followers. It never ends. what these people really want it met it means having the experiences we were born wanting manifesting the desires in our hearts the guides each of us is surrounded by our own invisible helpers who assist us in successfully navigating life's pathway these positive helpers could be called guides guardian angels or simply the voice of your intuition and you can kind of notice this in life you have some people at least for me i especially now it's like i can see some people's faces for the first time and it's like i've known them for my whole life which is just very strange or i see them and i'm like oh this person was meant to be in my life for a reason like i need to interact with them and then as soon as let's say i ignore it just like anything else a lot of times if you had let's say the one book i just read sacred contracts i talked about your contract with people no matter how long you repress something if you have a contract with them you're gonna have to fulfill it and you could wait a year but eventually it's literally going to happen no matter what. And that person will keep showing up in your life. But the, like, just like the guys, it's like you can kind of pick them out and we'll show you, <laughs> show you the ways. Tendencies to leave behind, seeing oneself through others' eyes, debilitating selfishness, being Mr. or Mrs. Nice, obsessive attachment to fairness and justice, codependence, attachment to external harmony life, uh, tilt forward tat mentality. The feeling of being complete you seek can only be achieved by individuality. It will not be the byproduct of a relationship no matter how wonderful the partner. So everything starts with you. I can help others best by truly being myself. Lead by example. You don't need to do anything to anyone else because if you are living the life that you want others to live or perceive you by, if you just live that, you don't even need to tell the people what to do. They can just copy what you do because you know you're living by the actions, not words. It's okay not to be nice all the time. Before I can support others, I have to learn to nurture myself. Some people are better at making impulse decisions than others and better at making logical decisions. Try to find out who you are without anyone else's projections. You will find the answer by looking inside yourself. Express your more assertive side, even if it's not loving. Stand up for yourself and what you believe in. When you are spontaneously upset, communicate and express it. Don't repress it. It is your job to simply be yourself, be the authentic, real you. Some people are here to learn about being more selfless and others are here to learn to be more selfish. 
Stick with a routine and be more selfish. So many lifetimes identifying with others that they have confused their center, their inner sense of self with that of their partner. They are hypersensitive to their partner's moods because the other person actually rests at their center. Thus, if the partner is unhappy and dissatisfied, Aries North Node will feel it too. He can spend all of his time and energy trying to make his partner happy so that he so that his own self sense of well-being and contentment remains undisturbed. This doesn't work. The best one can do is appease the partner, adding an ingredient that will temporarily change their mood, but the partner must then constantly be appeased in order to be happy, lasting forever. Learn to stand alone and be completely independent and satisfied with oneself. The relationship cannot grow unless the two individuals grow. Thus, no matter how much time and energy these folks devote to the relationship, it cannot give back to them. So they are better off examining the needs for the autonomy 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 and individual creative expression of both partners by encouraging and inspiring the other person to achieve results on his or her own they free both the partner and themselves as individuals <clears throat> constantly violate the boundaries of how much they give without loss to self then in fairness they expect the others to do the same give without the expectation of receiving anything in return i tell that to everyone so many times in life, you know, you might say you might do something for someone and then you expect something in return and then you're just like disappointed when they don't do anything. If you are like that, literally tell the other person what you went for them and then be like, yo, I'll do this for you. You do that for me. And like you have to literally tell them because no one's gonna, just going to pick up on what you have to say if you never say anything. Um, but you can go that route if there's some things where, you know, you actually want done and you can help the other person. They can help you. And if not, when you give without expectation, you don't really need anything from anyone else. Doing that will just feel good in general. Aries North Node people truly do love giving. It's their nature, but their motives need to be loved, not creating codependency. Their giving must be pure without an expectation of result in order to them, for them to be free of disappointment in their relationships. If you're finding giving an imbalanced way, openly bargain with your partner so that both people's needs are met equally. It's when they expect others to reciprocate without letting them know exactly what they expect that they go off without letting them know exactly what to expect that they go off track they need to give their silent expectations a voice dependence on others especially marriage partners is the primary issue for aries north node and a lot of people are dependent on other people and once you get to the point where you're independent and you do everything for yourself life will become way easier let other people know what you want and why it is important to them. In the first place, then, during, or after the fact of an action that causes conflict. Come clean from the beginning, discuss your desires and fears. So not only do you say what you want, when you say it's important to me, it's like, for example, let's say you have a problem with the way someone doesn't say good morning to you in the morning and that upsets you. Literally just tell them what upsets you and then tell the why. If you have a strong why behind whatever you have, if I were to pitch a business idea to you and I were to say, I have this amazing idea and here's why, because I want to help the other people and solve this problem in this big area. If you give a why other people can relate to, they're going to want to help you in that regard because, you know, there's a reason. It's just, oh, I want to be selfish. Oh, you want to help other people because you have this great idea and you know that it'll solve all these people's problems and they agree too. It's probably going to come way or work way better if you're not even list a why to begin with. The best self-discovery for North Node Aries is to act on impulses. May sound illogical, but this is what works best for them. So again, try to find your or find your North Node, and then kind of read up on a little bit. So if logic works best for someone else, illogical and going off intuition might work better for you. And once you realize that, just study, listen to the intuition. You're gonna win. Some people might be more balanced in the middle, but when you're able to find the, your strengths and look at your weaknesses and go all out in the strengths your life's gonna work so much better. I told you not to bite, it didn't tell you not to hiss. I think there's a story in there where it told someone to stop killing someone and then instead of not stopped killing people, they just did anything and let themselves get bullied. And the thing that said, they didn't say not to bite, but they didn't say not to hiss and at least defend yourself. The relationship cannot grow unless the two individuals grow. I already said that, my bad. Didn't flip the page, thought I did. Instead of giving away the golden eggs and the golden goose, learn to not overgive and keep the golden goose strong so you can continually give away the golden eggs without depleting the source. That was one thing for me. I was giving a little too much to the point where it's like, 
I was overdoing it and not doing things good for myself. So that was a lesson for me. Codependent stage, two people totally tuned into each other, compensating for each other's weaknesses so that the team can survive. Independent stage, each person can be completely self-reliant, each person taking full responsibility for his or her own projects, money, and day-to-day -day survival. Interdependent stage, one person independent and self-sufficient in his or her own right, uniting with each other, independently strong individual to form a mutually supported relationship and work towards shared goals. And North Node Terrace in the second house, Uncover hidden gifts and talents, loyalty, awareness of boundaries, taking things one step at a time, a sense of self-worth, awareness of personal values, patience, honoring, express needs of self and others enjoying the five physical senses, gratitude, awareness of nurturing for the mother nature, forgiveness and persistence, tendencies to leave behind, attraction to crisis situations over concern with the other people's business, impatience, inappropriate intensity, judgmental tendencies, preoccupation with the psychological motivation of others, resistance to cooperating with what others want, overreacting, destroying something to eliminate one's past, obsessive controlling tendencies. Their Achilles heel is seeking self-worth through others. You can only achieve a sense of completeness with themselves. To win, I need to proceed slowly and persistently step by step. When I live by my own values, I feel good about myself. Breaking the subconscious bond with their parents is one of their major life challenges. The problem is that these folks are projecting their own values onto others and then judging them for what they don't measure up to. That was one thing I did. I have high values or I have high expectations of myself. So when I apply it to everyone else in my life, it kind of made me see them in a bad light when judge people by their own values and their own rules that they make up for themselves. Because if you live by values and they live by another, you take what they look or if you take what you live by and see in them, they might not live up to it. But if you look at themselves through their own values, your whole pictorial, their whole trajectory of seeing them will be completely different. The things that upset you about others' behaviors can clue to finding their own values. For example, if they are criticizing another for having two relationships simultaneously, perhaps it is a clue that themselves, they value monogamy and monogamy should be written all over their values of importance and me wish list. They will start to build a sense of worth as they remain consistently true to their own values and they become less judgmental about others and have different values. So whatever you don't like in other people, just write that down in your list of that's something you value on what not to be. It shows you it's the inversion of what you do not like. The other person's goals may be totally different and the path they travel on might be exactly correct for them. Get out of other people's business. In this lifetime, it is in their best interest to separate themselves from the energy fields of other people's minds and focus on their own business instead. So I did this as well. Sometimes I still had things I need to focus on and I would go and try to help other people when it's I wasn't even helping myself. A major turning point is when they focus time and energy on projects that are important to themselves and not being diverted by what they think is important to another person. Focus less on bonding and more on building their own values, then they will attract the right mate when they no longer need another person and to make them feel whole, only then will they attract the right life partner. They are learning the value of simple, natural pleasures of life, food, sex, being comfortable, enjoyment of the physical pleasures that are the gifts of having a human body. It takes an incredible amount of energy to high feelings from others expressing express them. Don't battle, don't bottle them up. The fear that someone will find out generates a lot of anxiety. Expose one layer at a time, unraveling all the anxieties. When they step outside of society's values, they find their own power every single time than when they are true to their own feelings. These folks are too trusting with money. They know that trusting the universe is a principle that works. However, it is also true that God helps those who help themselves. Trusting the universe does not mean avoiding personal responsibility and doing irrational things out of blind faith. North Node in Gemini, third house, attributes to develop healthy curiosity, asking questions to learn how others think, seeing both sides of the situation, tact, logic, communication of internal dictonomies, a positive approach to life and other people purposely cheering up others, using a non-threatening approach when expressing ideas, listening, opening to new ideas, experiences, seeking factual information before making decisions. Achilles heel. If I have all the right answers, everyone will value me, then I can relax and feel connected to you, bottomless pit. These folks are so used to seeking control or eternal truths, absolute universal laws never change, but this carnation, they are learning to move about a social environment. 
I prefer spontaneously over planning because I don't know in advance if I'm really going to want to be with a certain person. They prefer to be free and to go in any direction, whether their energy is or that wherever the energy sense of adventure takes them. If your motive is to listen, you will win. If your motive is to be right, you will lose. Establish an emotional connection before a physical relationship. They need to learn to give greater weight to human relationships. They need to spend more time and energy getting involved with people rather than focusing on goals. The people may in fact end up being the goal if they can just stop overthinking. When you speak without considering the effects, they can be unnecessarily hurtful to others. Don't just listen exclusively to philosophers. Listen to everyday people, the mailman, the clerk, the grocery store. There is an endless variety of people they can connect to with that they must find those for whom they have messages. Everyone has a little bit of wisdom. Just like giving medicine to a child, coating it with sugar makes it that much easier. Write in a journal book or articles on a daily basis. The physical process of taking a pen and writing it down, what are their thinking grounds them in a stable way? Writing calms their internal restlessness, releasing the tension and anxiety in a form that brings them peace. So I think for a lot of this book, I wrote down for me the first three, I, was, I wrote down a lot of what they had instead of just writing down what I need to take from each one. So, yeah. Uh, also, when, or at least for me, for like the writing stuff down, it worked so well. I just started doing it the past year and like, dude, it is the most key thing in my life now. Also, when they begin to write about their problems or experiences, it focuses on their subconscious and the answer they were looking for comes through them and on the page. North Node in Cancer in the fourth house, and this is mine, so I'm gonna have a lot of notes on this one. Attributes to develop, noticing and validating feelings, empathy, nurturing and supporting others, building one's own foundation and security, honest disclosure of feelings and insecurities, humility, accepting others, fluctuating moods without judgment, staying concerned in one's own feelings. Tendencies to leave behind, needing to control everything and everyone. That's something that I do. I literally just tried having max control over my life in literally every aspect. I try to go to bed and wake up at the same time every single day. I started waking up extremely early. I followed diet down to a T with no moderation. I literally just try to control every aspect of my life. And I'm realizing now, like, if I just let go and kind of just follow how my narrative naturally feel, it'll bring me there already without even trying. Um, compulsion to take charge without fully understanding the situation, ignoring the process, being forced to, to focus on the goal. That's one thing I do. I have so many, or the big thing for me is I'm very good at achieving goals. I can set whatever I want and I'll hit it. But sometimes I'm so reliant on the goal that I'm not enjoying the way to get there. When the whole thing is like, the goal doesn't really matter. The process of getting there was the fun part. Um, feeling completely responsible for everything, hiding feelings and fears in intimate relationships, Doing things to gain admiration from others. That's another one. I feel like so many things I do, I literally just show other people that I'm better than them in some type of way. Not necessarily, but it's just like, I don't know. Uh, taking care of others' feelings and neglecting one's own. Doing what is socially acceptable rather than what is totally honest. I'm very really good at that one. I don't really care about the social. I got rid of it completely. Um, thinking that things have to be difficult in order to be important. The Achilles heel for cancer and the North Node people need to be aware of their need of control. If only I can make them get their lives together, then I can relax and be vulnerable. <coughs> um, when they try to take charge of situations in other people's lives without being invited, they're inappropriately unsurpering others' responsibility. So sometimes they're trying to fix other people and they didn't, even want to they didn't even ask for help to begin with. So like, what am I doing? And I still have problems with myself that I'm not fixing myself. The trap they need to avoid is unending search for acknowledgement. If only others will recognize my contribution in a respectful way, I can begin to feel good about myself, endless pit. Yeah, I feel like so many times, I mean, I'm very good at this now. I don't even tell people anything about my life for the most part. And then maybe if they ask a question why, I'll show them parts of it. But then when they ask me question parts of it, I kind of go like, I'll say what I do. And they're, a lot of times they're intrigued and then I'll just keep going on. And I feel like I'm just... I don't need the acknowledgement from someone else, but sometimes it's fun to, when someone asks you what you do and you're very excited, you're passionate because you work so hard on blank and then I show them that and then I kind of like go on a tangent, I don't know. Uh, only when they acknowledge within themselves the importance of contributions they make through nurturing others in a supportive way will they begin to feel fulfilled. Now, even a lot of things I do now, 
even if I didn't have need to acknowledge it from other people, I'd still be doing everything I do now just because I enjoy doing it myself and it's fun. But I feel like sometimes it does enhance having the other awarenesses on me. For example, I used to, at least for me, years ago when I was at the gym, I used to lift weights sometimes depending on if I saw other people there, I'd be like, yo, I can't let this dude live more than me. And then I'd lift weights and ego lift without, without good form and go totally off my schedule and maybe do a lift that I wasn't scheduled to do just because someone else was there doing things aimlessly and purposely. These people want absolute control of every aspect of their life. In order to achieve this, they must stay in touch with their feelings and insecurities and share the truth about themselves and others. It's not suppressing or trying to hide their feelings. It gives them a stable base to achieve their goals. Cancer North and people have a gift of being able to nurture and support others. Therefore, any profession that gives them the opportunity to nourish others physically, mentally, or emotionally is a joy for them. So again, you, you can find like your profession right there. So like after it says that, I mean, I already know I enjoy doing that in general, especially when you really start to pay attention. I feel like over the course of your life, you're able to find what works, what you do like. And that's one thing I really like. Being able to support other people and nurture them, for example, like I could be a, such a good therapist, bro. I'm so good. It's so funny. I'm so good at solving other people's problems when sometimes I don't solve myself. And now I feel like I've gotten very good at solving my own, own problems. And But whenever someone asks, comes to me with a problem, it's like a lot of times I already had it in the past. So I'm able to tell them step by step what to do. I'm like non judgmental. I don't criticize. I don't nag, I don't complain. I listen with 100% intention. I'm looking at you the entire time. I'm paraphrasing what you say back to you until I completely understand by asking questions to go deeper until I find the root. Like I'm very good at that and I find it so satisfying. So if I didn't come across knowing that myself and then when I start to read it and all these things make sense and they're perfectly outlined right there, it's like, that's one step I'm definitely gonna try to take in the future. Like I wanna definitely try to somewhat have at least have maybe like have a one-on-one -on -one with people and charge them x amount of dollars to solve the problems because things like that is like i enjoy it to the max i would do that for free all day it doesn't even matter it gives me fulfillment it makes me feel good excellent or bargaining at negotiation i feel like that's just one where it's pretty simple bro it's like if you were to go buy a car it's like why would you list the highest price of the price already there bro i'm gonna go as low as possible so we meet in the middle affirmations when i try to control i lose when i share my feelings i win I win when I acknowledge the capacity of others to take charge of their own lives. It's okay to let me sh my feelings show. It's okay to not manage everything all the time. So that's one thing I'm not good as well. Controlling and then showing other people my emotions. In the past lives, these folks were trained to repress their feelings, instincts, and sexual urges and enjoyment of the physical senses. Ab abstinence and discipline were the foremost and depressed re depri deprivation depreviation of the joys of being human was rewarded with respect and promotion so that's one thing i do as well bro i don't do anything for pleasure at all or anything that enjoys the physical senses for the most part if it's not towards any goal that i have now and everyone keeps telling me you, you got to enjoy the small pleasures of life when i just i just don't and i don't i kind of find fulfillment myself at the same time Am I doing that? Not for acknowledgement that I'm living the hardest hardcore life. That probably has something to do with it a little bit. But it's funny how this thing, it literally explains exactly myself. They are accustomed to postponing their pleasurable life and often postponement leads to permanent denial. So a lot of times I'll make a goal and I'm like, yo, I want to, I want to do blank until I achieve the goal. And then I achieve these goals and just make more. And I don't ever enjoy what I guess most people do. These people have lofty goals and everything else is put on the back burner until that goal has been realized. A feeling or righteousness is attached to their goal and they do not allow themselves to be distracted by human temptations because they constantly keep striving to reach these goals. They end up with no time for relationships, fun, or really living. Yeah, so I kind of cut out everything, bro. I cut out like three years ago, I cut out TV, movies, video games, social media personally, just every single friend in general and literally just worked on my goals and... I kind of kept it that way for the most part. And I mean, again, like I kind of feel good trying to achieve these goals because it's like, what else? But sometimes having fun and doing things that are boring does bring me some satisfaction. Uh, they have been trained throughout past incarnations to suppress their feelings, that is emotional responses to life to remain focused on their higher purpose they were serving, such as goals. Their hearts yearn to connect with the rest of humankind. They are ashamed for letting their feelings out. Their insensitivity to others is a product of their ingrained insensitivity to their own feelings. However, repressing their feelings in this carnation in the name of a higher power purpose is 
contrary to the direction of their soul is need for completion of this fulfillment. So actually repressing my feelings in this carnation uh, for a higher purpose for their souls is not good at all. So don't listen to books and other things. Literally listen to yourself. And if you're here for a certain thing, you'll notice it because you feel good after you do it and your energy will go up. So instead of doing something because you have a value or live by it, but in reality, you came here and you need to focus on the, not these things. Sometimes in order to do that higher thing, you need to let go of it. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know what I just said. We subconsciously seek recognition for the new ability and their sacrifices. If they simply release the need to get credit, they can reach their goals and enjoyment pleasure along the way. Their birth chart is set up to not allow them to put accomplishment, respect, and honor above other more personal aspects. As they work to reach their goals, just because it makes them happy to do a good job, because the work fills a public need or whether it's their own family and their entire world is the recognition that will be. But if they go looking for it directly, it takes them off track. They are still masters of accomplishment, but if their motive for accomplishment is to gain respect from others, they will never be happy with what they obtain. Because their need for respect is insatiable, they will never gain enough to be satisfied. It is essential for them to greet success with humble appreciations. Cancer North Nodes are masters at achieving goals. The talent is so innate that it is almost subconscious. When they have a goal in their mind, they are continually alert for new opportunities. They view everything as a stepping stone towards that goal. Sometimes I take life too seriously, achieving my goals wise. The serious part of me thinks that it will help me achieve my goals. Actually, it may surprise them they get the job done more easily when they are not so serious. When they lighten up and have more tasteful and more playful, open approach to life, it balances the energy and they become actually more effective. So sometimes when you introduce that balance in your life, you know, you might think you may, let's say, for example, you, you read four hours a day and after that four hours, you can't do anything else. Maybe if you were to read for two hours, then take a, a break doing something else. And then another two hours, take a break and do something fun that you weren't supposed to do. And then you're able to read six hours in the day. But in the other day, you can only read four, but you, can, you did four hours straight. When you break it up and take these little breaks and stuff, you can actually do more than if you were to not do the fun thing at all because it recharges you. The people who are helping you can't be treated like objects. You must take time to understand their per person's situation and forge an emotional connection. The other person will support you for their goals if they have taken the time to show interest in that person. For example, instead of nagging at an employee for being late, it would be an advantage to rather say, what's going on at home? It is wise for them to see things from the other person's point of view while treating them with the sensitivity and the golden rule, treat others how you would like to be treated. There are other hypersensitive or insensitive. Cancer North Node people resist taking suggestions from anyone. They like to do their own thing. And when they do take suggestions, it is when someone who is successful at something shows them how to do it. They only have respect for doers, not talkers. This one, I literally live by that. I literally like to do my own thing in every scenario. Don't like being told. But if I'm seeing someone that has results, I'm going to follow them. If they have a six pack and they're ripped, and they're really strong, bro, I'm gonna follow you. If you're rich and mad successful and got much, lots of money, I'm gonna follow you. Why would I follow the guy who's talking about, yo, I make money, and yet he lives in an average house, drives a regular car, and doesn't have that much money. I'd listen to the guy that has Lambo, who has all these businesses, who's actually speaking and has actions on what he's doing. They are either, oh, my bad. We have a strong or work ethic and it becomes problematic when we want or expect others to live up to our ideals. So again, with that thing, it's like, I expected the people to, you know, or my family members to kind of live up to the expectation I have. And it's like, they're never hit it. And I'm like, what are they doing? Why can't they do the most simplest things? And it's like, cause I have my values on top of them when that's not the way. And I change that perspective now and then it makes the life way more easier. And I'm never, you know, looking down, not necessarily down, but it's like, you know, let other people be responsible for their problems instead of helping them help yourself, presenting tasks and as problems they need help with. Cancer North Nodes are highly dependable. They always keep their word. They pride themselves on an unwavering devotion to take responsibility and keeping commitments. However, in this carnation, attachment to commitments when they are not even necessary and hold on to them, even though when it is no longer appropriate. They may sacrifice taking care of themselves and discount their own and need for security simply for the sake of honoring a commitment. That's that's so funny, bro, because for me, I take the word so seriously, bro. When I tell you I'm going to do something, like I'm literally going to do it. There is no 
oh, I told you that. No, I made an excuse. It'll rarely happen. Maybe if I make a commitment to someone and then I'll say something for someone else like, yo, I'll do this for you. And they kind of intersect with each other. Whichever one came first, I'm going to be like, yo, I said I was going to do this. Or maybe like legit, I have like a broken leg and I can't do leg day with someone. Like I, no matter what, I'm at least show up and be there with the person. So I take the commitment stuff so seriously and the fact that it's just exactly there. And sometimes I do commitments even though I'm no longer gaining and it's hurting me. So I just find that very, very interesting. Their word is their bond and they don't understand when the other persons don't manifest the same value. So dude, that was one of my biggest pet peeves, bro. When people give me, say they're gonna do stuff and they don't. I have really good friends say all the time they're gonna do stuff and they don't. And I'm like, why do I not like that at all about them? And that's because I think the word is literally everything in the, you know, it says right there as well. Honestly, revealing your feelings is what you're scheduled for in this lifetime. Further suppressing makes them feelings more insistent and more intimidating. The longer they avoid expressing their feelings nature, the more crippled they become. And the process of acknowledging their feelings and the magnified intensity will dissipate. So my problem is like, at what point do I tell people feelings, right? It's like, if I don't really know the person, I really like them. I suppose just like, you know, tell them straight up everything that I like about them. It's a little weird. Obviously, it's very simple to do if you like, you know, you know someone and you're able to do it. I, I used, to, I used to, yeah, I got way better at it before. I used to be like a robot at all and not completely change for the better. Um, but it's very strange, very strange. Life can be dry and boring, filled with outer achievements, but devoid of inner meaning and satisfaction. So sometimes I have all these achievements, I've done all these things, but inside I'm still not feeling complete. Oftentimes they come into incarnation with silence. They have a tremendous resistance to passion and an enormous capacity for self-control. When they interact with someone who stimulates their passion, their primal urges become active and threaten to take over. Since these urges have been suppressed, they are now overwhelmingly out of proportion intensity. The irony is that when Cancer and North Nodes fear most is also what they need the most and they want the most. They long to experience the nourishment and fulfillment that comes from a deep connection with another. Nothing else in life will ultimately satisfy them. Dude, it's literally crazy because when I have the deepest conversations with people, it's like that is literally what I live for. It makes me feel so good and satisfied. And it's like, again, you can't really buy those things. So if you understand what most satisfies you throughout experiencing and then learning in books, um, you'll do it more and you'll just feel way but overall way better. And it's like money can't buy that. Anything in the world really can't really buy that is literally just what you like. Whenever they respond to a situation with the motive of control, they lose. Whenever they respond to a situation from a position of caring and wanting to be supported, they win. Let's honestly be the bottom line. What is socially acceptable? These folks want and need to experience intimacy. The way to create it is to be vulnerable rather than controlling. So you need to be the authentic real you and you just share every part of yourself rather than control a situation. You'll be chilling. If you're too shy about letting someone know how you feel, journal it, write down a letter. No matter how much you attain, it's never ending and isn't satisfying. They're overachievers, postponing appreciation of the moment and the abundance around them and the life of striving or in the sake of striving towards the next goal. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey and what it took to get there. Happiness comes from the enjoyment of getting there. They must pay more attention to the beginnings, nurturing things, and seeing them as they grow. They must pay... A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Consciously recognize and appreciate what you already have instead of seeking the next goal. Learn to appreciate what life has already brought to us. Another goal that brings deep satisfaction to Cancer North Node is to focus on achieving emotional connectedness and intimacy in relationships. When someone opens up about their feelings, instead of trying to find a solution, first acknowledge and validate their feelings. The feelings, nature, and cancer North Node people have become purified. There is no hidden agenda and their emotions are innocent, natural response. North Node and Leo in the fifth house. A crisis can actually be a focal point that draws two people closer in an intimate bond of understanding and empathy. Empathy. Yes, yeah, so I always thought that, you know, bad things and arguments were bad when in reality, after you realize the argument and then you forgive the other person, it only makes your bond deeper. They have special talents working with children. Giving can take on many forms, compliments, encouragement, gifts, approval, understanding, cheering up the other person in countless other ways, both large and small. Give with pure motive and not with expectation of payback or keeping score. 
They are instantly aware of romantic connections when they meet someone of deep affinity. Their heartstrings are activated and they can almost feel it physically. There's no thinking about it. Usually they are attracted to a special vitality or however you say that in a person, a certain life spark. Because they have the gift of instantly recognizing the true romantic affinity, they assume that the other person has the same gift, but this is not the case. So that's one thing I can actually do. I guess that's part of this other one. And again, some of the house or some of the houses or the things or north nodes that you're not in, you can still have these traits. So I find it crazy how they really said that. And it's like obviously you heard of like seeing true love at the first sight, but it's like I can actually like legit know that, like offer it, which is and then again, when the other person doesn't know as well, it's like, what is this? And then one thing other people say as well that, or I guess psychic ability would be like being able to feel other people feel. It's actually like, I feel like it's very simple. If you're hundred percent in the moment, you're not living the past or the future. And you're in the moment hundred percent. You're so aware of how you feel in general. You have mirror neurons. So how other people feel, you feel. You, you seeing a sad face, you're going to feel sad. If you see a happy face, you see someone smiling, you're going to feel good and feel that smiling in yourself. So I always feel like it's like, everyone kind of has these things and it's not that hard to pick up on. But once you, you know, get better and you pay attention and put your awareness on it, You'll be able to tell. Usually when they feel a tugging in their heart, they look to see if the other person feels the same. But if it wasn't mutual, these folks wouldn't feel it. So if the other person wasn't feeling this feeling that, you know, being in love, then you wouldn't feel it because, you know, all you're doing is mirroring how they're feeling. So this is how you know. In the North Node, Leo gives up too soon before the other person has even had time to be aware of the connection and both people lose. Their best bet, I find this literally crazy, I tell people all the time, it's like, why would you even try and go and look for a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Like, what's the point? If you're trying to look for something, again, you're probably going to repel it away from you. And you have to let things happen naturally, bro. What fun is there? And when there's, like, no seducing or no, like, you know, long-term thing, you know, if you slowly know a person over six months, it's going to be so much more fun than if you were to just do something in, like, a week or two, right? Um, and then and rather than trying to go out there and find a person to be with, if you just find friends to be with and enjoy things they do and just enjoy being around them in general, it happens naturally without you even trying. So their best bet when they feel true love at first sight is to approach the other person on a non-threatening friendship basis and spend time establishing a genuine relationship, slowing down long enough to give the other person time to recognize the depth of the connection. So I tell it to so many people and I feel like you literally don't even have to try. You just be friends with the person in general. The problem is after the romance has been going on for a while, they may run out of steam. They grow tired of always being the one to spark the fire and bring out the best in the other person. Keeping the other person on the center stage and neglect their own needs for creative expressions and attention. These folks must responsibility for creating relationships in which they do not only give love and honor the specialness of other person, but in which they are also honored and loved so that the flow goes both ways. Choose relationships based off the energy slash emotions you feel. They will be very different from what they thought they wanted. Yet the person who makes their heart sing with joy versus what you think you want mentally, them being attractive, making good money, age, height, weight, don't solely go off that. Focus on the energy. The higher the energy, what was I going to say? The higher the energy, the better you're going to feel and, you know, you're, you're letting your energy always going to be through the roof. So as soon as you tell that, and just when you see this when a friend in person, you start smiling automatically, you get all excited, you lose any thought of anything you're just in the moment. The higher the energy levels, the better the awareness, the better the information, the more they understand that they're like one of you and they're probably going to be great people, right? Uh, where was I at? Uh, keeping the other person at center stage. Choose relationship as an energy. Learn not to depend on others' advice. Follow your own instincts. They always win. Great at noticing trends before they become popular. Finding value in things before the whole world sees it. Something I'm very good at as well. As soon as they make decisions, a host of ideas occurs to them on how to successfully create their dream. The proper sequence seems to spontaneously appear as they follow one step, the next step unfolds. The timing is absolutely miraculous. As they take on each step, doors open up and the right opportunities for success presented all to them. But it's up to them to respond to this angelic, angelic help by taking each step. They have an incredible ability to create their imagination, their own visualization of their connectedness with angels. They can attract people and in situations they want simply through the power of their wishes. If they truly make up their mind, whatever they ask the universe, if it is in alignment with their goodwill, it will come to them. Just like affirmations say, instead of saying like, yo, I want this, be like, I attract blank. You write it down. You say it every day. 
it comes into your life. Whatever words you say is how you feel. If you say blank, that's what's going to happen in your life. Suddenly their lives will shift. New people and situations will appear to allure them. Your job is to accept new opportunities presented to them. Asking people questions in retirement homes, every one of them said they never regretted that some things that they never tried. That ended up being mistakes. They only regretted were the things that they had wanted to do and did not do. The chances they hadn't taken. North Node in Virgo 6th house. When they are fully present in the physical realm, all their psychic spiritual abilities come forth. Simple tasks can be very therapeutic. I, I always thought, yo, it's like, why am I vacuuming the room? Why am I cutting the grass? I don't like these things. When now it's like, it's simple because it, you don't think, you just do, and it's very peaceful and relaxing. A pet forces them into a routine and gives someone else to take care of an intangible level. At the same time, they receive unconditional love. <sighs> North Node in Libra 7th house. Their Achilles heel is to be selfish. My rules are no more sacred than anybody else's. They try and show off trying to look good to attract attention and loving energy they so desperately need. These folks often are disappointed in relationships because they create expectations without accurately assessing the needs, ideas, per references, or timing of the other person. North Node in Scorpio in the 8th house. Their Achilles heel is holding on and accumulating possessions, a trap that is unending search for accumulation. When I finally have enough money and possessions, I will feel good about myself and I can be, I can relate to others. Need to be willing to risk losing their current level of comfort to gain a higher state of power and vitality. Let go of material possessions you don't need. If you feel heaviness, release it so you can feel lighter. There is no right or wrong about anyone's values. The more these natives are open to learning about others' values, the more they can understand and appreciate the other person and his or her reality. These natives have an amazing capacity for bonding owing to their ability to make others feel understood. Whether they listen deeply and understand the other person, their attentive listening makes the other feel loved and accepted. Their talent for listening also allows them to connect with the psychic energy of another and to bond with that person if they choose. Ask people how to, you can best support them. Don't try and fix them by projecting your own values and ways of life unless they specifically ask. I learned that the hard way. Now it's like you don't have to try. It's funny. Like, the less you try, the easier it literally is. It's like if people want to help, they'll literally ask you. And you don't have to try and force other people. You don't have to give them whatever you want. If they ask you, then you can provide. And if you notice that, yo, these people want help in a certain area of life, then you can tell them about other things. And if you see them making progress, then tell them more. Otherwise, you are probably wasting your energy. A soulmate relationship doesn't have to be sexual. It can be two people sharing a common goal. Both people become one of an energetic or psychic level to be more powerfully produce their project. Each person has to be willing to let go of personal issues to allow both partners' energies to integrate. These folks need to be willing to understand the other person, what he or she is willing to offer, and his or her resources are in order to combine and achieve maximum mutual gain. This is where they shine. If they focus on my values versus your values, they will lose. On the other hand, if they are clear about their higher goal and what they want to experience with the other person and that agreed on, then these folks are willing to adjust their methodology to work with the other person and gain experience. North Node in Sagittarius, ninth house. Achilles seal, mental security. If I can figure out what the other person or what the other people are thinking, then I can say the right thing so that they'll agree with my ideas. I feel secure. If I can just get enough facts, I'll be able to find the truth and then I'll know what to do on any search for information. When a decision is based on logic, information solely, they can change their mind when the new information becomes available. But truth doesn't change. So when they are making decisions based on the inner feeling or intuitive knowing, they have the power to stay with it. Write pros and cons list of anything you do. <sighs> It's better to let small stuff slide unless their motive for questioning the other person is actually listening and learn, wanting to learn more about the other person. Solitude, when they get away from people, they gain clarity, connect with their truth, and establish a sense of peace and well-being. North Node and Capricorn in the 10th house, Achilles seal, dependency on others. Trying to help someone else achieve, uh, achieve success is premature when they have not yet learned to do it themselves. If you're, in, if you're anxious about something, willing will do giving up <laughs> my bad 
If you're anxious about something, will doing it give yourself respect? If so, continue doing it. Allow others to be themselves without swept, swept up their negative energy. North Node in Aquarius in the 11th house. Achilles seal, the need for others' approval. They might they must risk disapproval and be true to their own orthodox ideas in order to develop the deeper and most satisfying feeling of self-approval. The trap to avoid is an unending risk, <laughs> search for risk, especially in romance. If I can just have a happy love life, then I will feel complete and I can begin to do my part to help the planet. However, if they don't balance this romantic energy with the daily commitment to some type of humanitarian cause, it becomes so intense that they inadvertently destroy the very relationship that they want so badly. And I'm an Aquarius, so a lot of the Aquarius stuff too, I can just see in myself. The irony is that when the Aquarius North Node people dedicate themselves to a larger cause, they find that the universe will fulfill them on a personal level as well. Be careful of what you ask for because you might just get it. What these people really want is to be in love, to be adored, to share the center stage with someone who returns their passion to reach this goal. They must learn to let go of the flow, to go with the flow and to tell the universe what they want and to let life with its perfect timing and bring others who will recognize and adore them. They need to learn to receive love naturally, to be alert and to the window of opportunity to respond to those who come into their lives to love them. Spending time with like-minded people, openly expressing unorthodox ideas and vision of future. Attract lovers who can also be friends and give them support they need when they focus on their dreams. Life will send them special people to change their dreams with romantic energy. They don't need to think about the consequences and take big risks because they think they are invincible. When Aquarius North Node's passion is ignited, she wants to jump in and invest 100% of her devotion and her mind will create whatever fantasy is necessary to keep the favor going. She only sees positive qualities in the other person and puts them on a pedestal, making the relationship seem bigger than life, which creates the emotional charge to which she is addicted. So I did that for a while, putting people on a pedestal, seeing only the good and none of the bad. And it's like a fantasy land. And it's like, it's not real, bro. But I guess sometimes fantasy land is fun. No matter who you are, we all share the same struggles. Let go of your limiting picture of what you will make you happy and be open to life's bounty. Then the wealth of new expectations will bring them unexpected pleasure. When they keep a low profile, they reach their greatest potential and have the most success. Stop fantasizing in the future and instead respond to the opportunities unfolding in the here and the now. Life is like a boomerang when they use their creative energy to help others, whatever they need comes back to them. Learn to release your expectations of what you think will bring you happiness and believe that life wants them to be happy. Others want to participate unless you create win-win scenarios. Keep seeing that pop up everywhere, bro. Only create win-win scenarios. If not, don't do it at all. In choosing projects, their best bet is to follow the energy that attracts them. Once involved in their energy stores, they are on the right path. In choosing who to work with, open-minded people who are not controlling and who are open to new ways of doing things are great people to work with. If they are like kids and don't want any adult telling them what to do. By taking the time to build a friendship before allowing romance to fully unite their willingness to be there for the other person comes through. This leads to trust and the relationship has a chance at success. If they need to stay in touch with their own dreams and actively pursue their goals, aside from the relationship, they have an incredible capacity to love. It's crucial for them not to focus exclusively on that object of passion. If they want a romantic relationship to work, they must consciously divert some of their intense energy to the other friendships and toward humanitarian causes. Generally, if the other person begins showing romantic interest in the native, at first, these folks don't get it, but if the other person continues to pursue them and some physical bonding takes place, then forget it. When passion hits, that is a combination of physical chemistry and a person who melts their romantic or meets the romantic ideals they dedicate their lives to following that feeling and the person who activates it when they are a part of when they are apart from the beloved their imaginations go wild they use their enormous power of creative visualization to imagine all the possibilities of the relationship to the idolize the other person if they are in a dry period of romantically financially mentally or not feeling happy they think it's always going to be that way they are learning sometimes the tide is out and sometimes the tide is in life is constantly changing all the time dude i have such good handwriting in this thing i don't know if y'all can see it but i'm actually proud because that looks a1 
They believe what others tell them and they are deeply hurt when people break their word. Sometimes you need to be withdraw from relationships and let go after a while. If they come back, it was meant to be. Since they lack the objective perception to play the game well, it is much better for them not to play at all. Instead, they need to relax and go with the flow and tell the truth about what they are, about who they are and how they feel as the situation unfolds. Then the other person will either resonate or not. So the romantic relationship can be based on the same honesty as a friendship. The irony is that Aquarius North Node people are coming from a place of such goodness and love that when they allow others to see their inherent innocence by releasing willfulness, willing, willfulness and revealing their honest responses, the other person mm, responds with love. They are great networkers. They love connecting with other people and are talented at finding common bonds among people. If someone has a personal Aquarius North node doesn't feel comfortable, she might say, for some reason, I don't feel comfortable with this. And the idea to be honest about whatever her antenna was picking up at the same time, often she discovers that it was actually exactly what the other person was feeling as well. So I, dude, it's literally crazy how a lot of times before I understood what the mirror neurons were and how you, other people feel is how you feel. I didn't know that. And a lot of times like, bro, I would say things to people. And if I go back in the past, bro, if I said things to people, before they even said it to me or i told other people how they were feeling before they even told me it's like i would literally break their minds bro because imagine someone telling you everything about yourself and you never said a word to them it's like bro i can tell when certain people have done different things and it is literally nuts because i i know it because i literally feel when i'm around them and then a little bit later they tell me and i'm like dang bro i literally knew that and then i'll tell them other things and i'll be like yo how did you know that and it's like magic they don't want to follow someone else's directions. It limits them and lowers their frequency. They were such powerful creators in the past lives that in this incarnation, they were able to manifest anything they want. They know how to do it. All the power of the universe will support them because they're contributing to a higher cause and this gives them access to incredible power. Another glitch that occurs in their passion is aroused, whether a romantic relationship or a goal that is extremely important as their tendency to take things seriously. They often become weighed down with the importance. If they get overly excited about a love affair, their intensity may push the other person away. Life doesn't want them to hurt them, but they ultimately hurt themselves by resisting the timing of the universe. When one door closes, another opens. They are surrounded by angels and spirit guides. All you have to do is tune into their antenna and listen to their guidance, and the path will be much easier to follow. This is not a do-it-yourself lifetime their guides are a part of their destiny and want to help them succeed but it's up to them to keep the connection open so it's like for them or that specific north node it's like bro they don't even have to try they just listen to their intuition and it'll tell them exactly what to do every single time north node in pc's 12 house surrender anxiety to a higher power achilles heel is wanting everything to be in order in an unending search for perfection it's okay to make mistakes you are only human when there is negativity, their best bet is to not interact, but simply move out of the way. Uh, set aside at least 40 minutes a day for a solitude reflection, no external stimuli. They can journal, meditate, stretch, breathing techniques, ideas, and solutions will occur that bring them new insight on problems and things you want to manifest. As their friends who can enhance their lives and make them more spiritual. Make wish lists, affirmations of what you want to manifest monthly. I suggest doing this daily them in the morning and at nighttime and adding to the list whenever you want to have a new thing that you want to manifest taking new classes with groups of people like yoga teacher training or retreats like Wim Hof's where you learn and have a lot of fun so I highly suggest that so I just started doing that one thing or the yoga teacher training and it's like actually insanely cool it's like I would do that stuff over and over again just could be being in a good environment and being good around around the same like-minded people it's literally just like fun bro so I'm definitely in the future going to do want to do one with Lee Wim Hof, but I want to try this in every area of life and keep trying to learn new skill sets in different areas and do it in groups of people that want to learn because it's literally, like I said, fun. So uh, definitely going to try to take more classes in different gyms and different areas and try new different things and just see where it brings me. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. That was Astrology for the Soul, another phenomenal book. This is probably the second or third longest one book review I've done again had so much information i probably could have dumped down a little bit more of the notes but a lot of it did work so hope you guys enjoyed the video other than that it's your boy have a good day and deuces